So as you might know, modding your Switch is pretty awesome and unlocks a ton of possibilities, but did you know that that includes installing full-on Android and a full Linux operating system, which gives you even more emulation power, custom software, like you're running a whole desktop operating system. Like the possibilities are pretty endless at this point. And in this video, me and Winston are gonna walk you through how to install both Linux and Android on your modded Switch. So let's dive right into it. So before we get started, I would recommend you go and watch my first video, which covers all the first steps you should take after you have a modded switch, which includes the special partitioning you need to do to both create space for Android and Linux, while still living room for your MUMMC, your SysNAND, and all that good stuff. Next up, let's go over how to install Linux on this guy, because funny enough, it's actually a little bit easier than the Android steps. And so first off, we get to choose our version of Linux we want to install on the switch. And there are actually a number of options, including Fedora, and I think a discontinued version of Arch. But the one that seems to get the most love and updates is Ubuntu, which if you're not a Linux faithful, that's probably the one you may have heard of. And the latest version at the time of this video is Ubuntu Noble version 24. If you want to browse the other options, you can check it out at the page linked in the description. I should have all the links mentioned in this video in the description, so call me out on it in the comments if I missed anything. But once you've decided on the version of Linux that you want to go with on the Switch, you'll definitely want to head over to the specific install instructions for that version of Linux to make sure we install it correctly on the Switch. In the case of Ubuntu, we actually have a couple of desktop environment options, which is a fancy way of saying just how the windows look in our managed in kind of the settings manager. And I went ahead and chose KDE because that's actually the same thing that the Steam Deck uses when you boot into desktop mode. And why not make this thing a little more Steam Decky, eh? Steam Decky, eh? That sounded real Canadian there. And from there, we just follow the steps in our Linux version specific guide. So in my case, it was just download the files, put them on the SD card in the right spot, boot into Hecate. Sorry, Hecate. Someone corrected me on that in the last video. Hecate. Then we'll hop over to tools, partition SD card. Oh, it's okay. You can stay. I know my legs are so narrow. Bony legs. Then we'll hit OK. It's just telling us what our partitions currently are. And then if you put the files in the right spot, you'll see an option at the bottom that says Flash Linux. I don't know why I'm describing it so much. I'm pretty sure I took B-roll of all of this. But anyway, if you can see over there, it says Flash Linux. And it'll prompt you if you want it to delete the install files when it's done. And I said, sure. And then a very important step, even if you're on a Switch Lite, which I was a little surprised by, is you're going to have to go in and dump the Bluetooth Joy-Con data, which you can do from Hakate. And from what I can tell, all it does is write a little file or two that Linux and Android can refer to when they want to know how to communicate with the controller or in particular, your set of Joy-Cons. So you can actually use those buttons and joysticks in Linux and Android, which is pretty important. And after that, you can head to the home menu of Hikate, choose more configs, and then just boot Ubuntu. And it's going to feel pretty surreal, but after a couple minutes, you're just going to be in Ubuntu on, in my case, a Switch Lite, which of all the Switches seems like the one that it's most ridiculous on, and I love it. And if you've ever installed Linux before, you're going to see a pretty familiar getting started wizard. Now, in my case, the on-screen keyboard shortcut described on the key bindings page didn't apply while I I was in the getting started section. Apparently those key bindings only take place once you're booted into the fully installed Linux distro. And so in my case, I did have to plug in a USB-C hub with a USB keyboard and mouse to make it possible for me to enter my username, password, and fill out the basic info to then finish off the installation process. And after that, you should be greeted with your desktop environment of choice. In my case, it was vanilla KDE. Now it looks a little more Windows 7 e which I like. And at this point, you've got an ARM-based Linux distro installed on your Switch, which take a second, that's pretty dang cool. One of the first First things to point out is that in the bottom right corner of the desktop, you're going to see a few tool tray icons. And one of them lets you control the kind of thermal profile of the switch so that you can set it to more performance kind of docked mode. I think it lets you even do a little overclocking if you want. There's a button to turn on the on-screen keyboard if you don't want to use the shortcut. Thankfully, lots of ways to turn on the on-screen keyboard now that you're done installing. You can limit the charging capacity from here if you want to protect the switch battery a little more, which is very nice. So definitely some nice little helpers worth checking out there. And probably one of the first things you're going to want to do is hop onto the Wi-Fi. And so you're going to set over to the Wi-Fi in the bottom right corner, choose your network. In my case, I was prompted to create a keychain so that Kubuntu could store my passwords. By the way, that's what Ubuntu with KDE installed. It's usually called Kubuntu. So very cute. And in my case, I chose to use the classic keychain and then there were no other issues. Now, if your Wi-Fi is very new like mine, we're using a WPA3 standard. And if you know what that means, then these steps are for you. If you don't know what that means, you probably don't have very new Wi-Fi, so you're probably fine. But anyway, when I went to connect, it kind of went into a spinning loop of trying to connect and failing, connect and failing. And there is a fix for that in the documentation, but essentially you punch in your password, hit connect, 
watch it try and fail. Then you just open up the settings and go to the connections area and you choose your connection. And then just change the security type from WPA3 to WPA2 personal, hit save, and then that fixes your Wi-Fi right up. Little annoying, but at least it's fixable. And once you have internet, you're gonna want your Linux distro to breathe the fresh air of updates. And so on Kubuntu, you just go over to the Discover app, which is a pinned app in the taskbar there. And Discover is basically the app store for both free and open source software and getting all your updates. So you just head over to the updates available section in the bottom left corner, install them all, give it a few minutes and you're good to go. And while you're in Discover, you may as well check out what else you want to install. In my case, I believe I grabbed the Dolphin emulator from there, which if you're following these steps, you're probably following them to be able to get fancier emulation performance out of your Switch, such as GameCube emulation. So I would definitely recommend grabbing Dolphin. And I plan to create a whole dedicated video later on for what the best settings are to get the max emulation performance out of your modded Switch. So definitely subscribe if you want to catch that video. A couple of quick tips before we move on to the Android installation steps. First is that my left control stick, which is mapped to mouse movement by default, was a little bit touchy and drifty at some points. And so a hot tip is that the screenshot button quick toggle between all of your controls being mapped to keyboard and mouse movements and just being a regular controller. So if you don't want your joystick to be moving your mouse, just hit that. And now it's just a controller not moving your mouse. So that'll solve that pretty quick. Also, when you're setting up everything, especially emulators or software, it can be a little annoying using exclusively the touchscreen and buttons. And so what I did was just install a VNC server and then I could VNC into it from my computer. And if you don't know what that is, you can Google it. But if you've ever used something like TeamViewer or Parsec, it's kind of like that. And the one that I installed on here to make that happen is KRFB, which is a built-in KDE one that worked really nicely. And something you can also do is like I did when I set it up, you can plug in a USB keyboard and mouse or probably even a Bluetooth keyboard and mouse if you wanted to. So lots of options there to make your setup process pretty easy. Another tip is that I would recommend trying to limit how many things you're doing or installing at the same time. Because bear in mind, you're running all this exclusively off of that SD card. And so it can only do so many reads and writes before it starts to really show that you're running a full operating system off of a micro SD card. So if you're doing updates, let it do updates. If you're installing software, let it do software. If you're playing the game, let it play a game. This is definitely not your gaming desktop. Let's just get that out of the way right now. And lastly, if you're installing updates or software and you get a weird error 256, I came across that too. And that mostly means you're trying to install a package that is actually meant for x86 based CPUs. Bear in mind, the switch is ARM based like a smartphone, not x86 based like Intel chips in your desktop. So if you encountered that error, you probably just need to change what you're installing and you'll be good to go. All right, and with that, let's install Android on our switch now. First thing you wanna do is head right back to the docs and from there, you're again gonna have your pick of options. In my case, I just wanted a version of Android that seemed to be getting decent updates and that would be stable on the switch. And that seemed to be Lineage OS in my case. And if you go to the page here, you'll see you'll choose the version of Lineage OS for your particular device. And you can even choose between tablet version or TV version. So if you have a non-light that can dock onto a TV, you might want the TV docked version, which means that you can just dock your Switch and turn it into a full tilt Android TV box, which is pretty sick, but that is if you don't already have some kind of Android TV box in 2025, so your mileage may vary. But in my case, I went with the tablet one because you can't dock a Switch Lite properly and I wanted that on-device Android tablet feel experience. So once you've decided on the type of Android version you're going to install, you'll then want to go to those particular installation steps because it does vary whatever you choose. And from there, thankfully, in my case, the guide was pretty self-explanatory, so I just stepped on through. I made sure my Windows computer had ADB installed, which if you don't have that, give it a Google, but it's just a way that Android can communicate with the device, which it needs at a later step. It then asks you to confirm if you have a G jig available for your unpatched switch, or if it's just a straight up modded switch, which in my case, it's hard modded, so we're good to go. It'll then tell you to partition the system, which we already did if you follow the steps in my previous video, so we're good to go there. And then it tells you to prep the SD card. And so you go ahead and follow the links to download all the files, and it gives you detailed instructions on where to put every little file on the SD card. So just follow those carefully, because there's a little bit of nuance. It's not quite a extract the zip onto the SD card. There are a few things you gotta move around. And once you have all that in place, similar to the Linux install steps, and he's back. <laughs> Oh yeah, the talent went on strike, but he's back. But then once you have all those files in place, you can just head back into Hecate, go to tools and partition SD card, click okay to dismiss the pop-up. And then if all went well, you should have the button lit up that says flash Android. And when it asks you if you wanna reboot into recovery, you'll choose no. And then when that process is complete, you'll just hit the X button in the top right. And if you didn't already dump your Bluetooth Joy-Con data in the Linux portion, which you do from the Nix settings menu, you'll wanna do that now following the steps in the guide. But if you did it for Linux, then you're good to go for Android too. It's a shared file. After that,
that, we'll be booting into recovery. And so you're gonna go over to more configs from the home menu. And then while holding the volume up button, you're gonna choose the lineage OS option. And you're gonna keep holding volume up until you see the lineage OS splash screen. From there, you'll tap factory reset, then format data slash factory reset. And their documentation details that this only applies to the Android partition you made, thankfully not the whole SD card. But you know, disclaimer, your mileage may vary. From there, you return to the main menu. Then we'll go ahead and select apply update, then apply from ADB to begin the side load. And this is where the ADB stuff comes in. Going into the details of how to install, set up, and use ADB is a bit beyond the scope of this video, but suffice to say, if you've installed or messed with Android in an advanced sense in the past, then you should know what you're doing here. If you're really stuck, something like ChatGPT or Google might be able to help you navigate this section. But the main things you need to know is that when you plug this device into your Windows PC, when you have ADB installed, this device shows up as sideload. And so the command is ADB-D sideload, and then you can just drag the Lineage OS zip file into your terminal to make it autofill that whole file path there. And then when you hit enter, that'll go ahead and install all the remaining Lineage OS files onto your Android partition on the switch. And when it's done, you should see a message both on the switch screen and in your terminal showing that the command has completed. Now, if you want Google apps on your Android install, which a lot of us do, this is also the point where you install a separate zip file that gives you access to the Google Play Store and basic Google apps. Adorably, this zip file is called the Mind the Gaps zip file, and you should be able to find it linked from your installation instructions. And you'll install it in the exact same way as you just installed the main Lineage OS zip file using that process of choosing apply update, apply from ADB, and then ADB-D sideload and the file path to the zip file. Note that in the command prompt, or I believe on your switch, you should see a prompt saying the signature validation failed. And that's expected because they don't sign the mind the gaps file with the same key as the Lineage OS stuff. And so just go ahead and hit yes, proceed, I don't care. And then it'll proceed just fine. And finally, you can choose the back arrow in the top left of the screen and choose reboot now. And you'll start to see the booting of your new Android switch, which is pretty sick. On Lineage, you'll see this little spinning circles animation, which is pretty slick. And you should know that your first boot will probably be fairly slow because it's processing a lot of files. It's gonna have you sign into your Google account, mine the gaps file, and it'll also wanna catch your Wi-Fi and all that good stuff. So just be prepared for the first boot to take a little while. It might hang a little bit here and there, but just give it some time. In my case, mine hung on checking info for a while, but the instructions said to let it cook for about 15 minutes, but I gave it that 15 minutes and it was still cooking and giving me a pop-up saying that the checking info screen had broken. So I finally chose the close app on the warning pop-up. And then I just went back and proceeded forward again in the setup process and then everything went fine. So your mileage may vary. Again, it's running a full tilt operating system off of the SD card alone. So just give it a little grace for that sluggishness. Once it's not trying to do so many things on your SD card, you should have a nice shiny twit to play with at the end of the rainbow. And yeah, once that installation process completes, you are looking at full tilt Android on your Nintendo Switch, which is pretty darn crazy. Like in my case, I can go to the Google Play Store and install the YouTube app and just start watching YouTube. I can install emulators like Dolphin and PPSSPP. I can install file browser apps like CX File Explorer so I can connect this thing directly to my NAS and copy files over. Or just enjoy flipping through the Android menus and UI and marvel at the fact that you're running Android on something that was really not supposed to run Android in the first place. As far as the performance of how Linux and Android runs on Switch hardware, your mileage may vary. It does definitely depend on A, what version of Android and Linux you chose, B, what you're running on it, C, if you've turned on any overclocking, D, the speed and quality of your SD card, and I guess E, luck, prayer, like, you know, once you're using something for what it wasn't originally intended to do, it is a bit of a dice roll. But if you're someone like me who enjoys the dice roll of tinkering with tech and making it do stuff it originally was really not supposed to, then you should have a really fun time with this project. Also, quick Android tip, there is a little switch configuration app that comes pre-installed. And at the very top of that, there's a performance mode you can check. So if you're using it for emulation, you'll probably want to play with that and see if that gives you what you're looking for. And that app is also where you can play with the mapping of the controls to Android functions. So a little handy tool there. Thank you to the devs who made that little guy. Like I said, I have a video coming up where I'm going to try and cover as much as I can of what the best settings and performance and configurations are for getting the best emulation power out of a modded device like this. Because if you're installing Android and Linux on your modded switch, you're probably trying to squeeze as much performance out of this thing as you can. And one of the best ways to do that is to make it emulate platforms that it was never meant to play. <clears throat> Especially platforms that a certain company wants you to buy the switch to to play. But anyway, that's all for this video today. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked it, please leave a comment, subscribe, like, whatever you want to do. Appreciate you guys and hope you have an awesome day.